The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. Welcome to SuperCoder's May GetWise webinar. Uh, we're calling this one SuperCoder, not just for coders. Thank you for attending. I'm Lisa Israel, and I'll be your facilitator for today's session. Uh, I am a coder, and I'm also a certified biller and a practice manager, as well as an auditor. And so I am excited to show you a little bit about SuperCoder's tools and resources today and to show you how they can make your life and your job easier, uh, no matter what your role is. Uh, it's not just for coders. Um, I am also a coder and certainly use the coding tools as well, but uh, in my roles as practice manager, biller, and auditor, I have also used many of SuperCoder's tools as well, and I'm excited to get to uh, show you some of those features today. Now, for some of you, I know that this is going to be a great first introduction so that you can see how helpful these tools in SuperCoder are. Um, but for others of you, you may be existing customers, and I'm hoping that this is going to be either a little bit of a refresher for you, um, but I'm also hoping that maybe I'll be able to show you something new, uh, or some new tips or tricks, or maybe even a new tool that you didn't realize you had access to that will help you use SuperCoder more efficiently and help you with your coding, your billing, uh, your auditing, compliance, um, and even practice management. Uh, so with that said, um, just a couple of things that I want to mention before we really dig into this. Um, our presentation is going to be about 30 to 45 minutes. I know that you uh, have lots of things to get back to and your time is valuable, so I'm going to try not to take up too much of it, but I want to be able to show you um, lots of exciting things in SuperCoder. So, but I won't take any longer than 45 minutes. Um, all of the attendees are in listen-only mode, which means that um, we won't have any background noise from people who perhaps forgot to mute themselves, um, but that means that you can hear me, but I cannot hear you. However, you can ask questions if you have them through the GoToWebinar user interface. Uh, you should have a panel on the right-hand screen, right-hand side of your screen. Uh, at least for me, it's on the right-hand side, and there's a place in that. Uh, panel to ask questions. Now, I'm not necessarily going to see them um, as I'm talking and showing you SuperCoder, but I will make sure that I check that box at the end of the presentation and answer any questions that have come in through there. And um, if you do not get to answer, ask your question or I don't get to answer it during this actual session, I will get a list of all of those questions um, sent to me and therefore I can email you after the session and answer those questions. And you will also have my contact information at the end of the session that if you don't get a chance to ask your question or you're not comfortable asking it um, during the session, you can email me or call me after the session and I would be happy to connect with you individually as well well. I also just wanted to mention quickly that there are no CEUs available for this webinar. This is purely a demonstration um, webinar about SuperCoder. So what can you expect uh, from our session today? Well, we're going to go through and actually look at tools within SuperCoder. So in just a moment, I'm going to actually switch over from the PowerPoint slides that I'm showing you right now, and we're going to actually go into SuperCoder online, and I'm going to show you the actual tools within SuperCoder. So these are just a list here on this slide of the things that we're going to go over today. Now, there's a lot more within SuperCoder that I can't cover, of course, in a half hour or 45 minutes, and so um, I will give you some information at the end on how you can um, either sign up for a trial if you're not an existing customer, um, or you can, um, if you're an existing customer, go in and play with these tools in your own account and explore uh, what I'm going to show you today in more detail, but then also take a look at some of the other features that we have that I'm not going to be able to cover today. So with that said, I am going to go ahead and uh, minimize the PowerPoint here and go on into SuperCoder. So what you see here is the login page. I'm just going to quickly log into SuperCoder. And once you set up a trial account or you're an existing customer, you will get a username and a password emailed to you, and then you will be able to log into SuperCoder. So this is the home page of SuperCoder. And I just want to mention that uh, your home page 
may not look exactly like mine. One of the really great features within Supercoder is that you have the ability to customize your home page to make it work for you and to bring the tools that you use the most onto your home page. You would do that using this little customized button. Um, I'm not going to cover that today, but there are a whole lot of little what we call widgets that you can actually put here onto your home page. So some of you may have ones that I do not have, or you may um, have some of the same ones, but in a different order on your on your home page. So don't be concerned if you um, log in and this is not exactly what you see. That's just because my home page has been customized. Uh, I actually just customized it yesterday so I could bring up um, some tools that I want to focus on and show you today. So the first thing I'm going to show you, um, as you know, if you're in billing or auditing, um, fee schedule data is, of course, crucial to your job. And so that's the first thing that I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about today. Um, you may not need just the current fee schedule. So you may not need um, the fee schedule for May of 2019. You might need fee schedule data from previous quarters or even previous years. Uh, so we have the ability to uh, show you that information within Supercoder. Um, I see, um, I have a question that says they don't see Supercoder um, that you're, that I'm describing. Um, I, I believe my screen should be showing. Let me just take a quick peek here and make sure. Um, I think everybody should be able to see my screen. If you're not able to, um, I believe it's an issue on your end and perhaps log out and log back in and see if that will help. Um, the other thing I'll take a moment to mention here is that um, if you do have technical difficulties or if you have to log off uh, before the end of the session or something like that, you get pulled away, you will get a copy of the recording of this presentation in your email after the session. So hopefully if you're having some trouble seeing the screen right now, um, you will be able to uh, see it in the recording. So I apologize if you are having some tough technical difficulty. Um, some other folks are saying that they are able to see the screen. So thank you for confirming that for me. Um, if you're not able to, try to log out and log back in and maybe that will fix the issue. If not, I hope um, you'll take a look at the recording and be able to see. I apologize that you're not able to see that. Um, so jumping back to fee schedules, um, in Supercoder, there are lots of ways to get to lots of different information. So we try to give everybody different ways of, of getting to information because we know that not everybody works the same way. And um, I'm going to kind of try to show you different ways of accessing information throughout the different tools that I'm going to show you. So for the fee schedules, I'm going to show you how to get there using this left navigation bar. On the home page, you're going to click here on the plus sign next to fees. And then you'll see it says fee schedules here. So I'm just going to click on fee schedules. It's going to open in a new tab so that I can work in the fee schedules, but then I can go back to my home page without having to, um, to change anything. I can just close the fee schedules tab and go back to my home page. Now, this, this uh, tool, the fee schedules tool, allows you to enter any code. So I'm going to just enter 52000, and then I can select the year that I want to look for. It goes all the way back to 2007, and will give you fee schedule data all the way back to Q1 of 2007. So let me just click on that so I can show you how far back it will go. And then I click Calculate, and this is the fee schedule. You'll see right here, Sources 2007 National physician fee schedule. This is from Medicare. So this is, you can see here, this was the conversion rate at the time. In our fee schedule, you can select national and look across um, all of Medicare and CMS, the national fee schedule, or you can partic choose particular localities. So if you have a certain locality that you're billing for um, every time, you, I'm just going to pick Iowa. Um, really for no reason other than that was where my mouse was. Um, if I am always billing, let's say, in Iowa, I can click this little checkbox here and make that my default. And when I come back next time to the fee schedule page, it's already going to have saved Iowa as my default. Um, if you deselect the default checkbox, it will always default to the national. Um, so this that's really a great time saver. Um, it's just one less step that you have to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click Calculate, and you'll see, I don't know if you noticed, but the numbers changed here because they were the national rates, and when I clicked Calculate, it changed to the Iowa information.
So this is all of your fee schedule data from 2007 Q1. It gives you all of the fee information, RVU information, and everything else that's listed in the fee schedule. So the global period, this is a zero day global period, or it was in Q1 of 20, 2007. Um, I'm going to go back up and just show you how this would change if I were to go to 2019, click calculate, and I'm going to go back to uh, national here and click calculate. Now this is Q1, so obviously it's not um, it's not May, but it's Q1 of 2019. And here's all my fees and my RVUs, and again all of my um, fee schedule information. So still a zero day global period. Um, there's no PC or TC components. And then list, this down here lists our uh, medically unlikely edits, um, as well as our MAIs and the rationale for the MUEs as well. So all of your fee schedule information is right here in one page. Um, and you can put in any, any code that is listed on the Medicare Physician Fee Schedule here. Okay, so I'm going to close out of this tab. And I'm going to go back to our homepage. The other thing that you can do if you wanted to go back to the homepage is you can always click on this TCI Supercoder logo up here in the left-hand corner. That will always take you back to the homepage. So that's another easy way to just navigate back to the homepage. The next tool that I'm going to show you is our Supercoder CCI Edits Checker tool. This is a big one, um, not just for coders, but also for uh, for billers and other folks, um, perhaps who are handling appeals and denials. Um, if you're trying to figure out where something went wrong or a payer is saying that codes are bundled together, you can double check that in your uh, CCI Edits Checker tool here on Supercoder. Now, I mentioned again that um, there are different ways to get to information within Supercoder. Um, I'm going to use the left navigation again for the, um, for the CCI information, but there are other ways. There is actually a widget. I do not have it here on my screen, but if I were to click, click Customize, I'll just show you real quick. I could click here and then select the CCI edits checker, whoops, and click save. It's going to customize my page, and I apologize, I just zoomed in a little bit there and um, with my mouse and shrunk my screen. Um, but if I were to then scroll down, here's my CCI edits checker that I just added to my home screen. So there is an option to get to the CCI edits checker in the left hand navigation bar. There is a, wid a widget and then there's also information on an individual codes details page which I'm going to show you a little bit later. So I'm just going to show you real quick here that in the widget you can check your CCI edits. Um, again there are multiple versions available within the CCI edits checker. You can see how far we go back. We go back to 2011. So if you are doing appeals and denials, that's extremely helpful because you're probably not going to be uh, always appealing uh, or researching a claim from the, the current month or the current quarter. You might be um, going back and looking at an appeal and a denial from perhaps two, three months ago, which might be a different quarter and therefore different CCI edits. So you can change this uh, just like you can change the fee schedule information as well. You also have access to the current and past years of, this, of the CCI manual. So if you need to go in and actually look at the manual, you can click on these years here and what it will do is it will open a PDF of the CCI policy manual. I'm not going to do that now, it would open in a new screen, but I'm going to just um, continue on here showing you how to use the tool. Um, you can either do auto tabbed, which means if I enter a code in the first box, it when I complete my code, I didn't hit enter or anything, it just auto tabbed into that next box when I completed the five digit code. Now you also can choose to do comma separated, which means that you would just enter your codes separated by commas. This is helpful sometimes if you're copying and pasting from another location. Um, you can just copy and paste the comma separated codes. 
I'm going to go ahead and go back to this box. Again, you can make that default so that you don't have to change your setting. You can also change your locality. So let's say if we were in Iowa, you can see here, I can change my settings for my CCI edits to be Iowa all the time as well. I'm going to leave it at national, um, but I do have the option to make that my default again as well. You also have the ability to do non-facility and facility and make that a default. So I've entered two codes here. I'm going to just go ahead and click CCI check, and it's performed a check of those two codes for me. Now you can enter up to 25 codes. Um, you can see here, let me scroll up just a tad. Um, the default is nine boxes to enter codes, but you can change it and up, enter up to 25, however many codes you have on your claim that you need to check against each other. So here is the results of our CCI um, check. You have a PDF icon here. You can actually open up a PDF of these results, which you can then save or you can print out. So if you are looking and researching for an appeal of a denial and you need to show the payer that um, these codes are in fact not bundled according to CCI, you can print out the results of this um, CCI edits check and present that and submit that to the payer. So we make it really convenient to be able to do your research and then print out the supporting documentation that you need uh, for an appeal or if you're doing any sort of provider education perhaps, maybe the pra as a practice manager or as an auditor you're doing some education of the coders or of the providers in a practice or facility. This would allow you to print out some supporting documentation um, for your findings when you're comparing these codes against the CCI edits. Now, you'll see here there's color coding. That color coding is described here at the top. Green means that you're good to go. There's, there's no challenge with that code in CCI. This orange or yellowish color is showing you that you might want to stop and slow down. Uh, there is a CCI edit. However, it has a modifier indicator that says you can use a modifier in, in particular circumstances. So it's kind of a warning. Um, makes you kind of stop and double check and make sure that your documentation supports adding a modifier and reporting these separately. Now I don't have an instance of a red edit here in the example that I gave, but if you had red text here, that would say stop, you should never report these two codes together. CCI says that they're bundled and you can never use a modifier to break that bundle. Now, within SuperCoder, in our CCI edits check, we allow you to get to a lot of additional information. So if I hover over the code here, you'll see that it turns into a little hand. The code itself is a link that if I were to click on it, I'm just going to show you this real quick. It opens a new page. We're going to come back to this page in a little while. This is what I mentioned before that we call the code details page. And we're going to go over that in just a bit. I'm going to hop back to our CCI edits checker for right now, but we'll come back to that and we'll see what else is on that code details page in a minute, in a couple minutes. You also have your fee information here about this particular code, as well as any anesthesia information as well. And then all of these little plus signs here are expandable. If you click on the plus sign, it's going to show you the different components. So this is the modifier crosswalk for this code. If there's any CPT assistance articles written by AMA about this code, I could access those here as well. The lay term, this is written, and you'll see this in the code details page as well, the lay terms are written by the TCI uh, and SuperCoder expert staff of certified coders, um, and it explains a little bit more about the procedure uh, and exactly what it says, kind of layman's terms. So gives you some more detail about the procedure and some more simplified language than what the code descriptors sometimes are. So if you're comparing documentation, it'll help you understand if this really is the right code for you. Now, my specialty coding alert related articles, these are any articles that have been written about in the TCI newsletters, and we're going to talk about those in a little bit as well. It's something you can add on to your SuperCoder packages, or if you have Physician Coder, you automatically get a coding alert as part of your package. This plus sign is for the fee schedule information. Uh, if it was a PATH lab and had any pricing on the PATH lab fee schedule, that would be here as well. And then this is our ICD-10-CM diagnosis cross-reference for this particular code, 
the 52000. So again, lots of ways to get to the information that you might need. So even when you're in the CCI edits tool, you can do more research and get more information about a particular code. So now I'm going to go ahead and go back up and I'm just going to click the logo to show you that it's going to reset my home page. And now I will still have that CCI edits checker, but all the information that I just entered has cleared out. So I just wanted to show you how clicking on that logo takes you back to the home page. The next thing I'm going to show you, the next tool that I'm going to show you, I think is a really great one, especially from a biller's perspective. And that's what we call our CMS 1500 scrubber. That you can get to through the left-hand navigation bar, or also up here you can click on this claims edits uh, little icon up here. But in the left-hand navigation bar, it's under claims edits, and it's a very first entry. Uh, Real-time scrubber for CMS 1500. I did want to mention, I forgot to mention it when I was talking about the CCI edits checker, um, and I want to mention it real quick now because it's important. We do also have a Medicaid CCI edits checker and an OPPS CCI edits checker. So if you don't use just the Medicare CCI edits, you um, have options to look up the OPPS as well as Medicaid CCI edits in Supercoder as well. So going back, we're going to click here on the scrubber. Again, it's going to open in a new screen or a new tab for us. And this is our scrubber. And what the scrubber does is it basically allows you to enter information from your claim and quote unquote scrub the claim. That is to check it to see if there are any potential errors in your claim. So this is really great from a billing perspective. If you're trying to make sure that your, your claim is clean before you send it out to the payer, you can use the scrubber to verify that. But it also is helpful with the, um, the claims denials and appeals process. You could put your information from your claim into the scrubber, and it might give you some helpful hints on what might be wrong with that claim and why you might have gotten a denial. So I'm going to show you how to use that with some examples here you're basically going to just build your claim right here in the scrubber. Now you can choose to use ICD-9 or ICD-10. Um, these days you're most likely going to be working with ICD-10, but if you do need to use ICD-9, you can do that here. You just um, click on this little radio button here. You have the ability to select if the um, patient has a primary insurance of Medicare and you want to check the you want to scrub the claim against the state's LCD policy you would just check that box and then you would have the ability to select the contractor type and the state as well now I'm not going to do that this time around so I'm going to deselect that box but I just wanted to show you that you can do that if you do need to the first thing that you're going to enter is a date of service. I'm just going to say that our date of service for this patient was May 1st. Everything happened on the same day, so my from and to are the same date. Now I do have the ability to check this box here, which says apply DOS date of service to all the rows. That means if I'm adding multiple procedure codes or service codes or supply codes, I don't have to enter this date of service on every line. If I click that box, you can see here it auto-populated my date of service for my next procedure code. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm just going to enter 64483. Now if you've entered a code before, um, it will pop up as an option, so that's I've obviously entered this code before. I'm going to put in two units here, and then I'm going to put in, let's say, a modifier TC and a modifier 22. Now you can either click with your mouse from one box to the next or you can tab and it will move you from one box to the next box as well. And then I'm going to put in a diagnosis of I-10 and tab to my next box. Now you probably noticed as I started to add some things, some little red messages popped up here. These are kind of my warning messages that say you might want to stop and take a look. You might have a problem with your claim. So We'll go through those in just a minute, uh, but I also want to show you here below where you're entering your procedure and diagnosis codes, the codes show up with an abbreviated description. I can click view details and it's going to take me to the code details page about that code. So if I need to look at anything about this code, 
I can click on that from the scrubber. It will open in a new window, a new tab like I showed, like it just did. And you can access the details about that code. So again, easy to navigate and get from one place to another to get more information to support what you're researching. Now I'm going to just click um, add procedure so you can see that, oh, I didn't add anything in this one. So let me just real quick, unless I do this, it's not gonna let me add something else. Now, you'll see there's lots of um, messages popping up here. If I were to click add procedure, it adds a third line here so that I could add, and you can continue to do that. Now, I could take a look at these notes right now and perhaps make some changes based on these notes, but I wanna show you what happens when I click submit in the scrubber. All of my messages stay here, but then if I scroll down, I get these color-coded messages that tell me I have some errors in my claim or potential errors in my claim, and it tells me how severe those errors are. So red is critical. That means that I really need to change this or my claim is going to be denied. It's almost guaranteed my claim will be denied, and you can see the types of messages. Um, this code I had put in a, um, units of two, and it's telling me that the MUE is exceeded. I can't bill more than one unit of this code uh, per day. So if I were to submit this claim, it would be denied based on MUEs. So I obviously want to make sure that I go back to my documentation and I check that, and if I need to, that I query the provider, and then I fix this before I submit that claim to the payer. Same thing here with this critical um, Modifier TC is not allowed on this procedure code. So if I were to submit that, I would get a denial. Now the next one is medium. That's just a warning. It's telling me that these procedures can never be reported together based on CCI. And I probably wanna take a look at that and really make sure that I have the supporting documentation um, and that I might need to file an appeal if there is some reason that I'm reporting these together. It's probably gonna be denied at first because of CCI and I might need to appeal that. These low um, warnings here are things that may not lead to a denial, but they are things that I want to look at and I really want to verify before um, I go ahead and submit the claim with these, these things on it. So if I scroll back up, I'm going to take a look at these up here just so I can work a little bit easier um, within the scrubber here. So CCI edit, um, this can never be reported. Well, oops, maybe I, I put in the wrong code here. Maybe I meant to do a 99213. That message went away. So I fixed that part of my claim. So let's say I wanted to, I went back and I looked at my documentation and this was just a typo. I was supposed to only have one unit here. So when I tab out of there, my MUE message goes away as well. Bilateral modifier 50 might be needed. Okay, let's say that I did that instead. And you can see that I'm fixing my claim here as I go. Um, and the messages are going away. Now that's not to say that um, this is going to tell you exactly what you should submit on your bills, because maybe I-10 is the diagnosis that the provider put on here. What this is warning, now this is a bad example because that wouldn't be a good diagnosis for this um, procedure, but let's say that the provider did document that I-10 was the diagnosis for this claim. Um, obviously you're not going to go back and you're not going to um, tell the provider that they need to change their diagnosis, but what you might need to check on is the medical necessity, that this diagnosis code may not support the medical necessity for this particular procedure. So just something, it's warning you and telling you how to work through your claim and make sure that you are um, going to have the cleanest claim that you can submit. And like I said, you can also use it on the back end for appeals to do some double checking and making sure that perhaps um, maybe it was just a typo, maybe that, that too was a typo in the system and you were able to see very clearly on here that it should have been a one and you can resubmit that claim that corrected claim. So I think that's a really handy tool as um, a biller and also as an auditor, I've used this before as well. I'm gonna jump back now, I'm gonna close out of our scrubber and I'm going to go ahead and go back to our homepage.
The next thing that I want to show you is the LCD and NCD lookup tools. Now for billing purposes and appeals purposes, you might need to access the local coverage and national coverage determinations. Um, you can do that right within Supercoder. You don't have to go out to the Medicare site, the CMS site, and search through lots of documents um, and lots of things on their site. Sometimes the CMS website is, is very hard to work through and navigate through because there's so much information on there. Um, and it's not always presented in the, the easiest to use fashion. So in Supercoder, we've tried to make it very easy for you to get to the information that you need right within Supercoder. You don't have to switch from one tool to another. You can do everything right within Supercoder. I'm going to show you first the LCD. I'm going to show you that um, again, several ways to get to it, including from the code details page that um, we're going to show you in a little bit, and I'll highlight that when we get there. But I'm going to go ahead and go down here. I have an LCD lookup widget here on my home screen. So if I was a biller, I probably would put this up on my home screen of Supercoder. You have the ability to search by procedure uh, code, LCD article title, or LCD article ID. I'm going to go ahead and just put in a code here, and we're going to search by code. I can search geographically by all states, or I can pick a particular state, or I can even refine my search down to a particular zip code. I'm just going to leave it at all states right now so that I can show you some more. But again, notice there is a make it default but, um, box here that I can check as well. Let's go back to our Iowa example. If I always am billing for Iowa, I can set this to Iowa, and then make it my default saves me a step later on. You also can choose from the different contractor types. I'm going to, again, leave it at all types just so it pulls up more information to show you the results. You can make that default as well so it saves your setting. This little archived data for September 2015, that means that if you have anything that has ICD-9 information that you need to look up, you can check that box and it will pull up ICD-9. You probably don't need to use that. Uh, as much anymore now that we're in ICD-10, but it is an option in Supercoder if you need to use that. I'm going to go ahead and click search and scroll down just a little bit, and you can see my results here that have shown up of the local coverage determination, the LCDs that show up for this particular code. Again, it's organized by state, so even if you did leave it at all states, you could scroll down and find your state and click on that. Then it's got the contractor type. Again, you can refine your search beforehand if you want to. But then it has the um, contractor name, the LCD ID, and the LCD title. I'm just going to click on one of these to show you that you can actually get to the policy itself, the LCD policy itself. You can click here and read the policy. It's going to open in a new window for you. There's the little hyperlinks here at the top. All of these you are clickable and will take you to that particular section of the LCD. I'm going to close out of that. Uh, if there's any associated documents with this LCD, this one doesn't have any, but they would show up here uh, if there were any. You can select here for the ICD-10. These are the diagnosis codes, the ICD-10 CM codes that are related to this LCD, as well as your CPT or HICS-PIX codes that are related to this LCD. Now, notice that when you're in the codes portion, there is this export to Excel. You can click this, and it will pull up an Excel report um, so that you can um, download uh, an Excel report that shows the codes related to this LCD. So that's important, again, if you're doing research or need supporting documentation for appeals. All of that information is there to go ahead and print out. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scroll back up on my screen. My NCD widget, my National Coverage Determined widget, is up here at the top. Again, it might not be in quite the same location on your home page because you can customize. But in the NCD lookup, you can see here you have a couple different choices. You can search by code, you can search by keyword in the text, you can search by title or section of the NCD. I'm going to just go ahead and search by a code. Let's try a different code here, 80061. Let's try that one. And click Submit. This shows you the NCD. Again, it's a clickable. You can click and it will open in a new window. I'm not going to do that for the sake of time, um, but it will open in a new window just like the LCD policy did. It will show you the NCD policy. And then this is the list of covered diagnosis codes that are listed in this NCD.
Again, any blue um, code that you see like this is a clickable link that will take you to the code details page. So that's important, um, again, for navigation and navigating quickly within SuperCoder. So that's our LCD and NCD lookup. Now I want to tell you a little bit about the official documentation that you can access within SuperCoder. Now if you're doing appeals or if you're doing any kind of education, um, either staff education, provider education, you may need to access official documentation. And by official documentation, I, need, I mean anything from... Uh, from CMS, from uh, about Medicare or about Medicaid, um, official documentation from the AMA, the American Medical Association, either um, in the form of code information or guideline information, um, and other entities like the American Hospital Association, um, the OIG, uh, folks like that, entities like that, that you might need to get some um, information and official guidance from. Now, again, you can access some of this official documentation from the Code Details page, which we're going to go to in just a minute. But I also want to show you how you can look up things using the search box here on the home page or on any page. This search box carries over to any page that you're working on in SuperCoder. So let's say uh, I'm in the state of New York, and let's say that I want to look up New York Medicaid and see if there's any official documentation from New York Medicaid because I'm researching a claim. Now, within the search box, you have the ability to refine your search. This is a really cool new tool um, and a new ability that we've added um, just in the last month on SuperCoder. It allows you to refine your search so that you're searching only in certain sections of the site, which then speeds up your search, which is really great. Now, you do have the ability to, um, to change your default search parameters under my super coder there's settings that you can change so if you always search in a particular thing perhaps you always search for codes you can search always in the code sets for this i'm looking for official documentation so i'm going to choose publications i've typed new york medicaid in my search box and i'm going to either hit enter or click search what that's going to do is bring up all the official documentation that's here on super coder that has to do with New York Medicaid. I can click on any of these to open in a new window the actual documentation. You can also narrow your results even further. So let's say I only wanted information from the OIG. I can click that box. I can even click this plus sign and refine it even further. Let's say I wanted OIG reports that have to do with, Medic with Medicaid in New York. I can click that box and refine my search even further. I'm not gonna go ahead and do that right now, but um, I just wanted to show you that you have the ability to home in on your results even further in this left-hand navigation pane. So there's lots of information, lots of different types of information, um, supporting documentation, research documentation that you can use within SuperCoder. Obviously, the breadth of what we have, I can't show you in the time constraints that we have today, but I hope that you'll go in and you will play with this um, a little bit and see what all is in here. I do want to go, I've been telling you uh, again and again that we're going to look at the code details page. This is one of the code details pages that opened before when I clicked on a code. I'm just going to show you that information right now. Um, you can, like I said, type in a code here uh, in the search box to get to codes. You can click on the um, different hyperlinks throughout the site to get to code details pages. And you can also navigate from, if I go back, let me show you here on the home page. If you navigate from the left-hand navigation bar, you can navigate to codes in this way as well um, and drill down through the different sections um, and um, groups of codes to get to a particular code. But I just want to show you the code details page. I'm not going to go through everything. There's a lot of information on the code details pages. But I wanted to highlight a couple different things that um, as someone who perhaps is not a coder, you might still use on the code details page. There's a lot of information on here for coders, but there's a lot of information for non-coders as well. Um, so here you have um, the official code descriptor. This is the same for, um, I'm showing the CPT code right now, but it would be the same for ICD-10 and HixPix codes as well. There's always an official descriptor. 
This is the lay term that we looked at before. Um, this is again written by the TCI expert staff um, to help you understand the procedure or the service described by this code a little bit easier. Now before I scroll down, I want to show you just a couple of these little icons up here at the top. Um, this little thumbs up, it allows you to add this code to your favorites list. You, If you have particular codes that you are billing or you are um, appealing denials all the time for particular codes, you can create a favorites list and that will let you get to those codes faster and easier and put your favorite codes all in one area so that you can get to them easier. Um, you can also add notes uh, with this little notepad. And I'll, when we scroll down, I'll show you there's also an area at the bottom to add notes as well. These are personal notes that you make and will be saved to the code in your account. It's not anything that anybody else sees, um, but it is saved. And so every time you come in, your notes about this code will show up with the code. So if you have things that you need to remember, um, if you want to put a note in that says, um, you know, this procedure code is always denied if you add a particular modifier. Just as a reminder to yourself, you can do that. This little CMS 1500 icon allows you to just click this button and add that code to your scrubber that we looked at before. So add it to your claim on the scrubber. This little CCI box allows you to check this, click this box and add it to your favorite CCI codes. This little um, graphic here, you might recognize it as an Adobe, um, a PDF symbol. You are able to print out the information from the code details page. So I'm going to click this just to show you. I'm not going to actually create the PDF, but you can print out different sections of this, um, this page so that you can, again, use it for an appeal or a denial. You can use it for provider education. You can use it for your own notes um, that maybe you keep on your desk. There's all this information, and you can choose what goes onto that PDF that you're going to print out. Okay, I'm going to scroll down now and show you some of the other things that I think are important from a non-coder perspective. Um, we talked about different ways to get to information. This is a lot of how you can do that. Um, in our crosswalks tab, one of the things that might be important to you uh, as a biller uh, would be the revenue code lookup. So this is a crosswalk between this CPT code and the revenue codes. Uh, you might also be in charge of, if you're not the coder, you might be in charge of MIPS. Um, that's something that is not always a coder's responsibility. So if a um, particular code has MIPS information, you can access that right here as well. Compliance tools. This is some of the information we talked about before. So our fee schedules and our CCI information and our LCD lookup are all right here on the code details page. And then here's where I talk to you about adding personal notes um, that you can go ahead and put that, that note right here. Now we're getting close to the end of our time here. I had a couple other things that I wanted to just show you quickly that I'm not going to spend much time on, but I did want to just highlight and let you know that we have them. We're not going to go through them um, in too much depth, but I do want to highlight them and hope you'll come back and um, take a look at them on your own. I'm just going to close out of our code details page and come back here to our home page. One of the things that I think is really important um, for continuing education um, and educating other folks in your office or facility perhaps is the coding alert um, and healthcare newsletters that TCI produces. So I'm gonna click on coding and healthcare newsletters here. I have access to all of our newsletters, um, but you can pick and choose which newsletters you want to uh, have as part of your SuperCoder subscription. If you have Physician Coder, you have a, su a subscription to one of the newsletters uh, as part of your subscription. We also have a multi-specialty uh, option that allows you to pick 120 articles per year from any newsletter. So if you have, uh, if you do multi-specialty billing or if you're a practice manager for a, a large entity that does multiple specialties, that might be a good option for you as well. But if you're in a particular specialty, you can also choose the specialty specific newsletter. Um, so this drop down list just shows you all of the different newsletters we have. And once you have access to that, you can come in and you will see the different issues. So this is the most current issue of each of these newsletters. I can click on the individual articles and see the individual articles. 
or I can click on PDF and I can see and open the full PDF of the entire issue of the latest newsletter. So I just wanted to show you that information. Again, I, the, um, the newsletters are a great way to keep up with the latest news, to keep up with the latest trends, um, compliance. Uh, we cover everything from, from HIPAA to HR. Uh, we do have a specific practice management uh, newsletter. If you are a practice manager, um, that might be something that you want to take a look at because it is specific to your needs as well. I'm going to go back to the home page again. I want to show you just very quickly that we have a couple other tools that you might want to play with a little bit. We just launched in December our EM calculator. This is a free tool. It's included with all SuperCoder packages and also um, is available to non-SuperCoder users as well. So you can come on to SuperCoder.com and use this EM calculator. It is a level of service calculator. Um, I'm not going to show it to you today, uh, but if you have questions um, and want a demo of this in particular, I certainly can do that um, offline. We can do that individually, so just let me know. I can do a, a demonstration of any of this if you want some more in-depth information. You can just contact me after. But the EM calculator is a level of service calculator where you enter information, your history, your exam, your medical decision making, or your time. We also do time-based coding. And at the end, you will get a final code level of based on the documentation points that you've entered, what your code should be that you would report. So that's a really great handy tool if you do EM coding, billing, or auditing at all. That's really exciting. We also have, if you, I mentioned MIPS before, um, if you are responsible for MIPS in your organization, MIPS Manager is a tool that we have that um, you can put in a code and it will give you all the information related to MIPS. It'll give you access to the measures and any other MIPS information that you might need um, when you're doing your, your quality reporting. Um, I'm going to go back to the home page and mention one more thing. And that is, under publications, we just launched our Dorland's Illustrated Medical Dictionary. This is really exciting. It's a very low-cost uh, addition to your SuperCoder subscription. Um, or you can purchase just the dictionary. You don't have to have any other SuperCoder access. Um, but it's a great low-cost addition, especially if you are not someone with a clinical background. Um, it's really great to give you some additional explanation of terms that you might see in provider documentation or in charts. And the really great thing about Dorland's, um, the thing that I'm super excited about is there's really great illustrations within Dorland's. I just wanted to show you an example of one of these. Um, lots of great information. It's really chock full of um, things that I don't come from a clinical background. And so sometimes, um, you know, I don't do cardiac uh, cardiology coding or billing, but um, if I had to, I probably would come to the dictionary to rely on that for some of the terms that I might see in documentation. So that is the quick rundown of SuperCoder. Again, there is um, a lot more information than I can show you in this presentation, and I did go over just a little bit. I apologize. I appreciate your patience, um, but I'm going to wrap up here. Um, I wanted to just mention, you know, why SuperCoder. I think it's important to note that SuperCoder is built by healthcare professionals like you. Um, we have billers, coders, auditors, compliance folks, um, clinical professionals who all help us build uh, SuperCoder. I'm very, very lucky to have a team of excellent experts who really know their stuff and help build this. So we make it as user friendly um, and hopefully it provides everything that you could possibly need, whether you're a coder or if you play one of these other roles that we've talked about today. Um, it is a comprehensive suite of resources and gives you lots of abilities to access data in one place in different ways. Uh, it is web-based, so you have access to this wherever you have the internet. You also don't have to lug around a bunch of different code manuals or print out um, a different a bunch of different Medicare documentation or AMA documentation. You also get access to extensive and exclusive content, uh, such as the coding alert newsletters. And you do have an opportunity if you are um, certified, not just as a coder, but um, as a practice manager or a biller or any of those other things um, through AAPC, we do offer AAPC CEUs as well. So that's important to note also. 
Um, follow up um, after this presentation. I'm just going to look real quick. I don't see any other questions. Um, if you have a question, you can go ahead and enter it right now, and I'll answer it um, if they pop up before we wrap up. But if not, um, you can go ahead and submit those either by email or you can give me a call. Afterwards, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have about what you've seen today or if you have questions about things that I wasn't able to show you or that we went through very quickly, I'd be happy to do further demos. Um, you can go to supercoder.com if you're not an existing customer and sign up for a free 14-day trial. So if you're not an existing customer, I hope that you'll do that and you'll go in and play with these tools and take a look at them um, on your own time and be able to spend a little bit more time focused on what you need and uh, seeing how that will work for you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, you will receive a recording of this presentation in your email, um, so you can go back and listen to it again. But if you have any further questions, if I can help you with anything else, I hope that you'll reach out to me by email or by phone. And I appreciate your time today, and I hope I was able to teach you a little bit more about Supercoder and show you all of the great resources that we have and um, help you realize that Supercoder is not just for coders, despite the name. So thank you again for attending. Have a great day, and I hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much.